Get this now. Barbie is in the news tonight. Not just any Barbie, a life-sized Barbie. College student Galia Slayan made this life-side version to highlight eating disorders. Oh, yeah, there she is. She's here to talk about her own problems, which may have stemmed from unrealistic messages she had been receiving about what she would look like from things in our culture like Barbie. Also here is actress Elisa Donovan, a star of Clueless. She, too, had a problem with eating and body image. And celebrity chef Devin Alexander, she is with us. She is the author of The Biggest Losers, Flavors of the World Cookbook. All right, Galia, how did you get the idea for this life-size Barbie? Well, um, Barbie is actually part of the National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. She's part of the Get Real Barbie campaign. And so when I was in high school, I saw this piece of paper that, uh, or this Get Real Barbie campaign, and it basically had all these statistics about Barbie, just these kind of mind-blowing statistics. And so I saw that her bust would be 39 inches, her waist 18 inches, and her hips 33. And I was just like, what would happen if she were real? Like, if you could actually see her, it would really create attention. It would really grab people just walking down the the halls in my high school they would actually turn around and look because I mean as you can see you can't miss her so um, that was kind of how the idea stemmed it was part of this larger eating disorder awareness week to really create discussion about eating disorders and body image issues how have other women reacted to this most people are shocked I think the general reaction among women and men is just shock and then there's sort of um, I guess you, you think back to when you're a little kid, it sort of makes you think back to, well, what was my relationship with Barbie? Or more so what, what the deeper image or the deeper goal really is, is to think about, well, what are these images as a child, the, the role models that you have as a child? Um, it's really questioning that. That's what Barbie is here to do. And so I think a lot of people have seen Barbie just on the surface as, oh, this crazy image. But hopefully what I hope people can gain is that to really be a critical viewer of the media and really question um, the things that are given to you as a young person. And also just as you grow up, just questioning the media. I, I love that kind of thinking. And let me just, in all fairness, uh, read something from the makers of Barbie. It's a Mattel Corporation. They had this email response to the Today Show when asked about Barbie's influence. As a pop cultural icon, Barbie is often used as art to express one's own personal opinions and views. Girls see female body images everywhere today, and it's critical that parents and caregivers provide perspective on what they're seeing. It's important to remember that Barbie is a doll who stands 11 and a half inches tall and weighs seven and a quarter ounces. She was never modeled in the proportions of a real person. And Galia, I think you brought that point home in a very vivid way. <laughs> Ladies, how do you react to this? I, think, I just want to say, first of all, I commend you and applaud you for being so uh, empowered and verbal and, and doing this in such a demonstrative way because it not only is so important to, to create positive images, but to hear young people and women actually talking about it and being not lighthearted that it's, that it's uh, a joke, but that it's something that really is needs to be blown open and so many women I think keep these secrets particularly with eating disorders and you, the you way had, they you feel speak about of secrets, themselves. you had eating issues you had something yes and I was anorexic and I recovered have been in recovery for 16 years and, I think and we, I've known you for 15 years yeah, and I didn't even know this about you. I was probably just really in the very beginning of my recovery so it was as I'm sure you know, it's an extraordinarily long journey, mm -hmm. and there were process really for five or six years. I don't think I was really quite functioning. Well, you aren't, you aren't you're very fragile, and you aren't all the way in yet. Yes, yeah, it takes a while. Yes, and you really have to uh, uh, commit to making that the most important thing. And see, but the thing that really that for me helped me get well was I saw how small my life had become, and I think the real tragedy of what's going on is that women not uh, women and young girls little kids are getting the message that the most important thing is what your body looks like uh, and, I, and to it's me, not. It, just, it makes me crazy that women always take stuff on yeah. that is so it makes it makes me sad that's what they what take we do, on. right well, we just uh, take it all in uh, it's, so but, I, but we can't help it <laughs> well, maybe you can is my point golly you you had an issue too with food right yes i did i was i said okay. devin i beg your pardon <laughs> devin, you, i'm thinking about golly and her barbie devin you had an issue with food. i weighed close to 200 pounds by the time i was 15 and i was one of those people i was trying to diet but i just couldn't do it i couldn't get my mind around never having a brownie again versus getting picked on versus you know all of that and i find it so sad like today I I'm, get, I'm gonna stop you you got look Look, this is this beautiful woman now, and think about her at age, what, 14? Mm, 15, getting, yeah, 15, 15, 15, getting picked on. And, you know, the research shows very clearly that kids that get picked on have real difficult time recovering their self-esteem.
Is that still an issue for you? You know, it's not really. I mean, I have those moments. I can't say that I never, but like last week, I saw this fashion show, and it was for a group of empowered women, and then you see these stick girls, and then you go and try on the dresses, and you're like, seriously? Like, I just yeah. like got dressed and left, because I'm like, this sucks. But yeah. for the most part, I don't. What gets me is I literally got a tweet last week where a woman wrote, I spend 80% of my day hating myself. Wow. And this, that, yeah, we were talking about me. this earlier. That's why I think there has to be this a colossal shift culturally and socially, just what we focus on. Because whether you're starving yourself or overeating or cutting or whatever it is you're doing, it's all about I don't love myself. Mm -hmm. And why not? Because you don't, you can't live up to these irrational, uh, impossible standards. D Devin, you were overweight as a child. How much did you weigh? Uh, close to 200 pounds. And then you lost the weight by learning how to eat correctly? Yes. I basically changed the I'm bad, I can't, I can't, I can't into a happy obsession. Like, I figured out how to cook the foods that I love in a way that I can enjoy yeah. them and eat them. I is, is, it, is it self-nurturing? Is that what you learned how to do? How to take care of yourself? I think so. It was, first of all, I found passion. Like, yes. I had something Wait. that I was good at. That's good. You're what? So what? <laughs> what? I, honestly, I didn't I, I think that cooking is exactly what you're saying. It's a self-nurturing thing. Yes, and, and I don't think women, women you, care for themselves. They're so busy caring about everybody else yes. and what other people think. And also, again, changing the value system. You know, a bazillion years ago, it was women were, were in the home and cooking and providing in that way for their family. And, you know, maybe there was some shift in, in women's lib, and now we can do everything. And, you know, I, I don't know where it happens, but... Uh, after the break, I'm going to tell you a personal story about this very issue. Galia, do you agree with what the ladies are saying in the studio here? Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's it's really important for people to realize, just more so with eating disorders, that they are really an internal issue and to really just, as I said before, question the media, question what's going on around you and um, just be cognizant, especially if you have friends who are struggling with eating disorders, um, realize that it's not just an issue with food, it's a much larger issue, yes. internal issue. Yes. So you can't just say, you know, why aren't you eating more, that Th that's type of right. thing. That's so right. it's, it's so, so much more. Two than or three issues, you're absolutely right. So eating disorder is one disorder that evolves in this cultural context where there's something empty on the inside and eating disorders emerge but there's this bigger issue here of women taking care of themselves feeling good about themselves and being cognizant and, and um, smart about how they consume media when we come back who's responsible for these women's body issues men models magazines we're gonna answer that next Nancy Grace and Dr. Drew, HLN tomorrow night. We're talking about eating disorders and self-image and why so many women respond to external forces when it comes to how they perceive their appearance. Men are certainly part of the problem here. I don't know if you noticed, but some of these screwballs in here, my, my crew, <laughs> they, they kind of like that Barbie. I, 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 don't, I don't, can't speak for them. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, but Galia, how have the college kids responded to your message? You know, I think a lot of guys kind of take it as a joke. They don't really realize. They're just like, oh, like, look at her body. She's obviously very, I guess, voluptuous in certain places. Um, but there are some guys who really have taken it seriously and been like, you know, I have had a girlfriend, I've had a sister, I've had someone in my life who has struggled with an eating disorder. And so some people do really take it seriously and it kind of, she's just a much larger message, I guess. Her, she embodies so much more than just I guess what she embodies. Golly, I want to thank you, really. Thank you so much for doing this, and thank you for joining us. I want to check in with you as time goes along about your progress and getting people to be aware about media. And for you guys, media is, I don't want to say it's the enemy, but it's the issue we're really talking about here. It's the images that sell that seem to never go away that affect yeah. women. So. I'm going to give you guys sort of closing comments, starting with Devin. How can you combat See, this? I don't think the media images are going to go away, so you have to look inside yourself and find something that you're so passionate about, whether that means go volunteer and find something that drives you through your life because you don't have time. Like, I don't have time to obsess about food now. I really don't. I mean, except to create recipes. Like, I'm off doing things and speaking to people, and it really helps me so much. Do you feel good about yourself? I do. Okay, yeah. see? That, that, that's at the, at the core of it. It is at the core of it. I mean, I would say a, a similar thing, that you really have to find what it is that is your passion and what your voice is. And I know for me, the thing that really 
I realized I had lost was my creativity, my individuality, my intelligence, my my tactileness, the ability to be intimate with people. So you really that, have I to. That I think is a major issue. Major, and, and, major. And listen, being close to other people, having closeness, yes. tolerating closeness. I say this mm -hmm. over and over again on this show. That's where we build a sense of an emotional life. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you when you uh, tap into really who you are as a human, uh, what it is you desire, what you want to say, how you want to live your life. One, one last question. Do, does, am away. I the only person that, that, that this whole topic makes makes you sad? It makes me sad. Yeah, it makes, that, me really it makes you me sad. Really sad. So I have to yeah. see yeah. my really wife, sad. my daughter, my sister, yeah. my you guys, Good. my friends. My Little girls, exactly. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. It's really, really sad. Can we stop? Can I mean we're talking about women supporting other women, right? Yeah. Not being a, brutal to each other as you tend to That's be. That's right. I think that's also a big part of it is that it, 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 we've also created this culture where women are against each other yes. because there's only a, a little amount of space for us to fit in and I think that when we start embracing each other and and just how we are and look you know we're we're women that obviously care about what we look like we're not talking about you know <laughs> becoming some some walking around in a potato sack although I do do that sometimes <laughs> if you see me coming out of I, yoga I've known you for I a long like time that. I figured that was yeah. okay so but you know it, it's about the balance of all of these things and celebrating your your beauty as well but just not just not only the exterior it's not the I, primary and I like Devin's yeah. idea about not just passion but nurturing yourself and maybe your peers and yes. the people you love well, and stop with the negative messages to yourself they say you have 60,000 thoughts in a day and like 80% of them are negative oh my gosh that's huge that's you guys huge, keep your conversation huge, huge. going off the air but